Today we will start with inverters, basics of inverters. So inverters are called DC to AC converters. Okay. So inverters are called DC to AC converters. DC to AC converters. So DC is our source, it can be battery or our uh, phase controlled converter okay, or our front end AC to DC converter. Okay. So let us assume our DC is fixed, how to get AC, AC means alternating voltage waveform. The moment AC, the word AC comes into my our mind, we always uh, think AC is sinusoidal. Okay. But all for, uh, uh, for all purpose for UPS or for modern applications, we want as far as possible nearly sinusoidal output voltage and current. But to get the nearly output sinusoidal uh, voltage and currents are very difficult. So what we will do, we will uh, get as closely as possible sinusoidal voltage and uh, current. Last class with, uh, with the PWM from for front end AC to DC converter. So we have studied about uh, pulse width modulation technique. So in pulse width modulation technique, uh, we learned how to get a uh, output waveform uh, proportional to our modulating waveform. That modulating can be a sine wave. Okay. So before coming to that, let us take the basic AC waveform. AC uh, how to get a basic uh, the basic converter DC to AC uh, basic converter. This is called single phase half bridge converter. Single phase half bridge converter. The basic configuration let us our DC we are splitting it into. If the total DC is DC, this will split VDC by 2 and VDC by 2 here. Okay. Then this is our switch. Okay. Here this is the center point here, we connect the load. Okay. Now let us start, uh, start from the symbol DC converter and the symbol load. Let us uh, consider this is a resistive load. Then our switch will assume whenever, uh, whenever we give a control pulse or gate pulse, the switch is immediately on. When the gate pulse is removed, switch is off here. So we will talk uh, such type of uh, uh, switches can be realized using transistors, MOSFETs or IGBT. Okay. Now let us say this is our A. Let mark the switches S1 and S2. Okay. Now let us say S1 is on. S1 is on means the voltage waveform across A, A, A O will be a point will be connected to this point, S1 is on, switch is closed and A, V, A, O will be V, D, C by 2. This is V, D, C by 2. Now we are turning off S1, that means we are S1 on. 
okay. At this point we are turning off S1 and turning on S2. So let us assume the switching transitions are instantaneous. So S1 is immediately switched off and S2 is turned on. So what will happen? Now the VA0, S1 is off, S2 is turned on. This point A will be connected to this point. So our VA0 will be minus VDC by 2. Okay. minus VDC by 2. So at this point S1 is turned on, at this point S1 off and S2 on. Again at this point we will be turning off S2 and turning on S1 on. Okay. So this will repeat. So equal duration on and equal duration off or in other ways equal duration on for S1 and equal duration on for S2. That is a must. Why? Otherwise this area here if the durations are not same the top area and bottom area will not be the will not be equal. So what happens? There will be a DC shift. But what we are talking about DC should be 0, output should be AC, need not be sinusoidal. This is an alternating waveform, the moment AC means a period should be there. So that period is from here to here, this is our period, okay. And for DC to be 0, exactly this point should be T by 2, that means half period top switch is on next half period bottom switch is on. Okay. So we uh, generated the simple, the very basic AC waveform. Okay. Now for a resistive load, what will happen to the current? Current will be proportional to the voltage. So depending on the resistance, the current can have same waveform. This height will be VDC by 2 divided by R. So need not be a square pulse, but it is a periodic pulse okay, that depends on the resistance R. So we generated the basic uh, AC voltage waveform, but almost all the time load need not be resistive. Load can be a back EMF of a load, load can be inductive. So let us take a general inductive load. So what happens? So we will redraw the, uh, we will make this is inductive. Okay. VA0 inductive. Then we'll, what will happen? Again, we are whether the load is resistive or inductive, we are switching on and switching off the uh, devices with equal duration. So here you will get a VDC by 2, okay. Now what happens? what happened to the current through the inductance. Let us take inductance with the uh, inductance with the resistance. So what happened? When this is turned on, current will slowly rise. Okay? So if you see the uh, steady state operation, current will go like this, come like this, again here it will go like this. Okay. So at this point the dA by dt is negative both voltage, so it will go in the uh, negative direction, so equal positive and negative. So if you see here 
for a purely inductive load or assume the resonance is very negligible okay and we are applying equal positive across the uh, equal positive during the first half and equal negative on the uh, during the second half so that is this one so for the voltage there is no dc so current also cannot be dc because of the kirchhoffs law but this current will have a wave shape like uh, like uh, this if if it's inductive load inductive with the resistance there's a time constant it will rising and decreasing but if you see here part of the time when the output voltage is positive during this period current is negative only during this period both voltage and current is negative voltage sorry voltage and current positive okay at this point during this period voltage positive current negative there is a difference between resistive load and the inductive load see current is negative see we cannot switch the waveform depending on the load we will be switching the inverter sorry we will be switching the inverter with equal duration positive cycle equal duration negative cycle to get the our basic ac voltage waveform so it is independent of the load but here if you see the current is negative so even though at this point a is connected to s1 previously previously if the current was in this direction positive let us take the positive direction let us take in this direction so current will be when the switch is closed current will be flowing like this now in this point current is negative negative means it will be in this direction so a is connected here so how the current will flow so we are we want a bidirectional switch okay so in this negative direction to take care of that one we put an anti parallel diode here so when s1 is on when s1 is on s2 is off so when s1 is on in, if the current is in this direction it will go through the diode okay now when s2 is on s2 is on s1 is also on s1 is off but when the s2 is on means this point is connected to this one that is means diode anode point is connected here and this point is here because of s2 is on diode will be during the full s2 on period diode d will be switched off because it is reverse bias so whenever s1 is on only diode will conduct depending on the current direction that means this is true in the negative direction also see if you see this po, uh, during this period what happens current is positive it is going in this direction now at this point we are turning off s1 off and s2 on so what but the current is still positive positive means current is in this direction now s1 is turned off so what happens current uh, direction cannot change in instantaneously in the load so this current it should have a free wheeling diode here so so what we for the inverter what we uh, talk about a switch is a bidirectional switch this controlled switch igbt or transistor or power most with the uh, anti parallel the free wheeling diode together constitute a switch for the inverter same thing also that will that means these are bidirectional switches that means current can go in both the direction okay now 
So independent, so what we have come out here, we have come out with an inverter with using two bidirectional switches and by equal duration of the switching on period for the top and bottom device, we got an AC waveform, a square waveform, okay. Need not be square, this can, that depends on the VDC. The periods are equal. So, we got a uh, AC waveform with equal positive and equal negative. That means, DC is 0, it will contain only AC waveform. And independent of the load, whether it is resistive or inductive load or independent of the current direction, we can switch the inverter. Now, the moment, but more, uh, as I told, if you want an AC waveform, what do we want? We want the nearly sinusoidal voltage waveform or the load should take nearly sinusoidal current and the harmonic currents due to the harmonics should be much, much smaller, okay. For that, the L should be very high so that the L omega omega varies with the harmonic frequencies, it should should be very high so that the, the current amplitude due to thus harmonics should be as low as possible, but that may not be all the time possible. So, for a such a system, let us see a waveform like this, what are the harmonics involved. Let us draw the waveform. Okay. Okay, this one equal duration zero pi two pi. This is VDC by two. This is minus VDC by two. Okay. So what are harmonics? It will have. It will have a fundamental. See, it can have a fundamental. It will be something like this. Then it cannot have a second harmonics. If you see here, second harmonics are even, this are second bits even function, but this has an odd symmetry, okay. So, second harmonics will not be there, it will have a third harmonics. Third harmonics means it may be, it will be something like this. Okay, third harmonics. Then it can have fifth harmonics. Okay. So if you how to find out this amplitude of this harmonics, we can do the Fourier series. So the harmonics V A zero N harmonics. We can do the Fourier series. Will be it will be sigma N is equal to. We can do the Fourier series into infinity. It will be 4 by pi VDC by 2 into 1 by N sin N omega T, okay. These are the harmonics. Let us say N is equal to 1, we will get the fundamental. Fundamental will be 4 by pi into VDC by 2, okay, into sin omega t, okay, according to this Fourier series expression. So, amplitude V is 0, 1, amplitude will be 4 by pi. VDC by 2. Let us take next N is equal to 3. It will be 4 by pi VDC by 2, 1 by 3 sin 3 omega t. Okay. So, what is amplitude? 
V A 0 3 amplitude is equal to 4 by pi V D C by 2 into 1 by 3 that is this time. Now, let us take n is equal to 5, then the amplitude will be equal to 4 by pi, no the uh, fifth harmonic time will be 4 by pi V D C by 2 1 by 5 from this equation sin phi omega t. So, V A 0 of 5 is equal to 4 by pi V D C by 2 into 1 by 5. So, if you see here fundamentally is equal to 4 by pi V D C by 2, third harmonic C is equal to the same fundamental amplitude divided by 1 by 3 and fifth harmonics if you say the same fundamental divided by fifth. So, if you see the harmonic amplitudes, if you plot it, it will be like this. If you want to draw the amplitudes and the harmonics order. So, fundamental, fundamental will have some amplitude that is a v, uh, 4 by pi V D C by 2. Then third harmonics will be one third of that one, fifth harmonics will be 1 by fifth, seventh harmonics will be like. So, so as the order increases amplitude will be inversely proportional to the order, so it will go like this. Okay. Fundamental third, fifth, seventh, then and ninth it will go like this. So, if you see here. So, this is the fundamental. Now, what we want for the output voltage for an ideal DC to AC converter, we want the sinusoidal component only, okay. Because if these harmonics are present, these harmonics will produce its own current waveform, okay, and these harmonics will not are not uh, will not be able to produce a real power, it, but it the, at the same time it can create lot of I square R losses that efficiency can come down because of the current. Now, what we want? We want all these harmonics to go especially the high amplitude raw uh, high amplitude low order harmonics should be suppressed high amplitude low order harmonics should be suppressed so if you can suppress then or the amplitude should be reduced or eliminated then what is the advantage then the current will be due to the harmonics far away from this one and the impedance for that one is suppose it is for the impedance uh, for inductive load for ninth harmonics it will be 9 L omega, impedance will be more and so V 9 by the current 9 L amplitude of that current will be much much less compared to a harmonic current due to 3. So, how to suppress or reduce this one? The moment if you want to eliminate any harmonics, the immediate uh, idea is to put a filter. So, you put a filter so that third, fifth, seventh theoretically possible, third, fifth can be highly suppressed. But the problem is as power electronics engineers, see these are mathematical good mathematical concept, but if you put it the cost of the system will increase. Okay. So, we should also give a DC to AC converter with a cost effective solution that means minimum components as uh, minimum components uh, as much as possible with increase of liability. So, filter is not a uh, putting filter is not a good concept okay, because these inverters we use for a UPS application with 100, amp 100 amperes or 50 amperes or 10 amperes. So, if you want a uh, filter of LC that L 
gauge has to be proper to that much current and that much copper is required and to suppress third harmonics the cut off frequency should be very close. So, size of the inductance will go and the cost will also so filter is not a optimum solution. Another thing we were talking about the DC to AC converters. AC converters means alternating waveform. So, the AC output also should be controllable that means for an AC waveform both voltage that is magnitude and frequency should be variable you should be able to vary according to what we want the load one. So, in our previous single phase AC to DC converter with a rectangular pulse like this with equal uh, duration on and equal duration off. If you see here the frequency that is 0 pi this 3 pi this duration depends on when you turn off S1 and when you at this point S1 off and S2 on okay. At what point we are making S1 off and S2 on. So, this instance in, in this instant we can shift it this way or this way. So, by controlling the instant at which the switches are um, uh, turned on and turned off the frequency can be controlled. So, in the previous circuit what uh, I want to say the frequency can be controlled by controlling the device turn on and turn off period of duration controlled by varying the switches on duration that means this period okay this period s1 on this period this period s2 on so by controlling these two we can control the frequency that is frequency but ac waveform means amplitude so amplitude what we are talking about the fundamental if you want the real fundamental let us for the time being forget about the harmonics the fundamental amplitude also should be controlled then only we can have a, a controlled dc to ac uh, variation so how this so the present previous circuit with that switching sequence what i told you will not be able to control it now let us take about a not the single phase half bridge let us talk about the full bridge converter so with full bridge converter the amplitude can be doubled compared to this one. Let us go to that full bridge converter. Single phase full bridge converter. So, what we want to do here the same our DC is VDC by 2 DC part is still the same we have the O here. VDC by 2 okay. We have the switch here. Now, the switch is a bidirectional switch, we have the diode also here. Okay. 
So, previously load was connected between this point to the O. So, to increase the voltage, this point will remove and that is A and the load is this part is here, we will put one more set of switches here like this. Okay, this is B. Okay, so this is our switch S1. Now S2, S3, S4. Now let us see. The previously, when the S1 is turned on, we have taken the uh, A point. Here, what we call the uh, leg A and we will measure the leg A voltage and leg B voltage with respect to a common reference point that we can measure. We can either measure from this side bottom side or we can measure from the uh, this side. So, in line with our half bridge converter both pole the leg A uh, and leg B uh, voltages we will measure with respect to O. So, the voltage V A 0, V B 0 are called pole voltages, V A 0 and we have two poles here and why this pole? This concept you know we have shown it uh, single pole double throw switch. See that means this A is a pole. When this is on, A can be connected to this side, top side. When this 2 is on, A can be connected to this side. So, from that concept of single pole double throw. Similarly, B can be connected when the S3 is on connected to the positive rail and when the S4 is on B can be connected to the negative rail. So, V A 0 and B B 0 are called pole voltages. In let literature also it is like this called pole voltages or leg voltage. That pole voltage comes up from the single pole double throw switch. Okay. These are all switches, these are represented by switches. Okay. Now, these switches are not mechanically controlled, it is electronically controlled, there is only difference. So, these are poles. So, V A 0, V B 0. So, if you see this V A 0 and V B 0 or this poles A pole and B P pole according to our wish we can connect it either to the positive or negative, these are independent. Okay. But to get the maximum voltage, let us see. Let our V A 0, V B 0 is like this. So, it goes like this. This is our V A 0 pole voltage. This is V A 0. Okay. And what happened to our V B 0? So, V B 0 also we are controlling this way V B 0. I will do the other way. So, our V B 0 is like this. So, if you see here this case during this period S 1 1 and during this period S 2 1. Okay. So, the pole A is connected to either to the top side or the bottom side here. Okay. Now, V B 0 here V B 0 is connected to the bottom. So, it is during this period S 4 1 and during this period S 3 1. 
okay. Now see this A and B what we call the pole A the point pole A the point uh, pole A and pole B that point are at the opposite end of our load okay. So our load voltage waveform the load voltage waveform is equal to V A B correct. But what we got here is V A 0 and V B 0. So what is V A B? That means we have to go from voltage A to B. We can go from V A 0 V A to 0, V A 0 then we can go from V 0 to B. So V A B is equal to V A 0 plus V 0 B. That means we are go measuring the voltage V A with respect to 0, then we will measure the voltage uh, at point 0 with respect to B. So if you do it, we will get the V A B voltage, V A 0 plus V 0 B. This is also equal to V A 0 minus V B 0. So what it shows? The net pole voltage or the net load voltage is the subtraction of pole voltages. So that means the load voltage VAB VAB is equal to VA0 minus V0 is equal to VA0 minus VB0. So if you do it here, what will be our load voltage? Let us draw this our x axis. VA0 minus V0. So already this is VDC by 2 and this is minus VDC by 2. So plus VDC by 2 minus of minus of VDC by 2 will be VDC. So this will go to VDC here. Okay. So this amplitude is equal to VDC. But this amplitude is equal to VDC by 2. Similarly, VA0 minus V0, this is positive. So mi minus will become, this will become negative. So together this uh, 2 minus VDC uh, by 2 will become minus VDC. So this way it will go. So this height is equal to VDC. So by properly synchronizing the pole voltages V0, VB0, we got the same freak output frequency but the output voltage is equal to voltage is doubled. So what we, what we did, we here uh, we have a rectangular pulse with equal duration for the pole voltage A and B0 and properly synchronizing the waveform V0, VB0, we got a output voltage V double to VDC. But here also okay, we got the increase in the voltages, but here also we are not able to control the voltage. Suppose I want a v DC voltage, what mean the controlling the voltage? Controlling the voltage means we have to control the fundamental component. Okay. How to control the fu uh, fundamental component? So we want the frequency to be controlled independent of the amplitude and we want to control the amplitude independent of the frequency. So two control functions are needed, so we require two degrees of freedom. Okay. So from the previous circuit using only one limb, we can control the frequency. Here also the second limb we have added, here also we can control the frequency. Now about, but if you see this control of V A 0 and V B 0 are independent of each other. So from that we can derive the, the second control option. What do you mean by it is independent of V A 0, uh, it can be controlled uh, independent of V A 0. Suppose here 
this V B 0 V 0 instead of this way, if I have if I have switched like this that is this portion that is here S 3 on here S 4 on then what happened these two waveforms are identical magnitude are identical frequency is out, out identical then what will happen the output voltage output voltage will be 0. So, V A 0 and V B 0 are identical. So, V A 0 minus V B 0 will be 0, even though individual pole voltages are not 0. So, that means there is a control flexibility possible because of the independence of pole voltage and V B 0, pole voltage V A 0 and V B 0. That probably we can make use of for controlling the output voltage. How to do that? Way? Let us, uh, that means the switching instant of VB0 can be, the switching instance of the VB0 with respect to A0 can be varied, shifted. Now, we have shifted previously 180 degree, why 180 degree? We can vary with theta. It can vary from not only 180 degree, 0 to 180 degree, any instant between 0 to 180 degree. That means the VB0 can be placed the previous VB0 can be placed uh, or delayed with respect to A0 between 0 to 180 degree. So, then the how the output voltage will vary, let us see. Now, let us draw our VA0 waveform. So, our converters we will draw now again. See, here I will put VDC. because we do not want the O, o point, load we need not connect it there. The load points are connected across A and B. Okay, you have the diode here. S1, S2, S3, S4. Okay. So, but the A voltage waveform A and B, we can still measure with respect to A, we can assuming A is measured with respect to the fictitious center point of VDC. Still if you do that one, our VA0 will be like this plus VDC by 2 minus VDC by 2. this is our V A 0 waveform, this is our x axis, okay. this is our V A 0. So, we are measuring the uh, pole A with respect to the fictitious center uh, point A. So, this will be V D C by 2, this will be minus V D C by 2 and S1 on, S2 on. Now, I told we have the freedom of choosing the switching instance for B, but the top and bottom has to be equal duration. That only ensure that the pole voltage have, there is no DC components and all AC waveforms only. All AC means all the harmonics, DC will not be there. So, let us delay the B with respect to an angle alpha this is our angle alpha alpha. Now, B will be we will start from here. So, we will try, uh, probably try uh, with a different color. So, B will be starting from here.
this is our VB0. So, with this delay of alpha, how the VAB will be? VAB is equal to VS0 minus VB0. So, VAB will be, if you see here, during this portion, VS0 minus, during the alpha portion, VS0 and VB0 are the polarity is the same. So, subtraction will lead to a 0 voltage at the output side. So, during this period output will be 0, okay. Then you have a voltage is equal to VDC here. During this portion it is 0 and during this portion it will be negative VDC. So, you have pulses like durations like this. So, now the waveform will be like this. This height is VDC and this will be that this one will be minus VDC. But during this period alpha, this is alpha here, alpha here, the output is 0. So, what happened to the fundamental? Now, if you see the fundamental like previous, fundamental will be placed at somewhere here, middle. it will go like this, again it will come, 0 will be at the exact at the symmetry here, half, alpha by 2. So, let us take the harmonic content of this one. So, we can find out. Now, the new VAB n is equal to, see period we can take it only as pi we can take it, okay. So, 2 by t Two by pi integral minus pi by two to pi by two. We are taking the half the v cos n omega t d omega t. The Fourier series. This will be equal to. See if you see. We are integrating minus pi by two to pi by two. So if you see here pi by 2 means from that one alpha by 2 period it is 0 both this side and this side. So, this duration on period we can represent as beta and this as also beta. So, this will be V A B n is equal to 2 by pi integral minus beta to beta into V, D, v is equal to VDC, VDC cos n omega t d omega t. So, finally, this will be equal to, this will become equal to 4 by pi VDC sin n beta. So, 4 by pi VDC sin n beta, okay. What is beta? Beta is equal to pi by 2 minus alpha by 2. So, we can substitute this one here. So, finally, our equation will be V A B harmonic amplitude n will be 4 by pi V D C into sin n into 90 minus alpha by 2, okay. 
4 by n pi see 4 by so sorry here also n in harmonics will be there 4 by n pi. So here it will be 4 by pi n VDC sin 90 minus alpha by 2. So what will be the fundamental? So the fundamental will be VAB fundamental will be 4 by pi VDC into sin 90 by alpha by 2. So this will be that fundamental component will be finally 4 by pi VDC into cos alpha by 2. Okay. So by varying alpha by varying alpha from 0 to Zero to that alpha duration by zero to pi, we can, the output voltage can be increased from VDC to four by pi VDC to zero. But the problem here is we are varying the alpha but the output is proper to cos alpha i2. This is not a linear control. This way also we can control the output uh, and frequency also we can control. Okay. Now we should uh, when we use this one for UPS or motor drive applications for linear control output should be proportional to the function we are using. So there we can use of the sine triangle PWM and we talk about the uh, sine triangle PWM in the subsequent classes. Now we have talked about only one phase, most of the time we were recording three phases. How do you control the three phase voltage waveform? This we will study in the next class.